Right, you guys, got another video here for you on Windows 10 hidden features you should know. So, we're going to go through some of the little hidden gems that you can enable in Windows 10 that you might not know about. Now, some of these you may know, but some of them you might not know about. So, let's go ahead and take a look. So, first off, we're going to be uh, working with the Windows 10 clock. And if you want to add more than one uh, clock to the actual Windows 10, interface than you can do. What you need to do is go into settings, time and language. Inside here you will see all of the settings for your clock. You can set it all up inside here and if you want to add other time zones to your clock you can do. Now this is useful if you work in IT or you are supporting someone in another country and you might need to know what time it is over there. So this is what you're trying to do here. Now you can right click on the clock and edit it this way, but you can see show this clock and you can add in a time zone of for that particular uh, clock that you want to display, whether it be Cairo, whether it be Kuwait, America, anything like that, Dubai, wherever you want to do here, you can put it in there. You can see you've got Moscow, St. Petersburg, and you can give it a name. So for instance, we're going to put Istanbul inside here, and this will just display it as Istanbul in that area so we'll know that that is the clock that we're looking at right there now you can also add another clock in so you can add additional two more clocks here so we're going to add another clock in so let's go ahead and put in say for instance pacific time you can put in whatever you like whether it'll be um, at central time or anything like that you can put whatever you like in there now again you can put in a us and canada if you wish or pacific time or whatever you want to put in there you can call it whatever you like as long as you recognize it as that time zone then that's all that really matters so you can just put in i'm going to put in pacific time here so we know exactly what that is when you apply and okay that you should get your country's time and also the two other times that you've entered in when you hover over you'll see those clock times right there and also when you click on them you'll get the clocks displayed at the top as well as your clock time as well now this is very useful for people that are talking to people in other countries on a regular basis or whether they are uh, basically uh, giving support to those com uh, countries as well so it's always useful and handy to have that now another one I want to do is add seconds to the time. If you want to do that you can go into the registry editor. Open up the registry editor by typing regedit in the search box there. Everyone knows how to open up the registry editor and then go to H key current user and then we want to go to software and then come down and go to Microsoft here. So open up Microsoft and then what we want to do is pull this down here. I'm going to come down to Windows, open it up, and then current version. So click on current version here, and then open this up here. So what we're looking for here is Explorer, and then we want to go to Advanced. Inside here, you want to create a new D Word 32-bit value, and uh, basically give it a name. So I'm going to right-click here and go New uh, D Word 32-bit value, and again you can just type in. What I'm typing here saying show seconds in system clock and that's it and then whack that in there and then basically just give that an entry of one so double click on this and give that an entry of one and click OK. Now when you log off and log on or you restart the computer either one of those what it will do is it will basically display the seconds. Someone did actually ask me uh, for both of these uh, about the clock yesterday, so I thought I'd add it into one complete video just to show you. So basically all we need to do now is just quickly log off here and I'll show you what it looks like when it's uh, logged off and logged on. So sign out and then sign back in. And there you go, we now have seconds ticking down on the clock how important that is to you I really don't know but some people uh, just like to know how to do things I suppose and there you go we have our seconds ticking down on the clock just like so you can see it all ticking down there very simple and easy to do but that's how you do it let's move on to another uh, feature here that might be useful to you we're going to go down to the search box here and we're going to type record in here and what this does I don't see many people using this but it's called step recorder now what this will do is basically if you've got a problem with your computer 
and you want to try to show someone what is wrong with your uh, computer maybe you want to show them an error code that's coming up you can push record and every time you click the screen it will record those instances so when you open this up it will record snapshots in time so you can see here basically recording everything I want to show you so maybe I want to show you the search area here and maybe there's something wrong inside here and I'm getting an error code when I open this up you can then show them uh, what's happening and basically stop the record you can also add in some text here with some uh, comments maybe you might want to say this is what's happening every time I open up the search feature I get a crash or an error code or something like that and you can then add that into uh, your um, into your screen recording click on stop and then basically this is what you're going to get you'll get the end result all here with images and also it will show you the steps that you took by clicking on this so let me open this up and we'll take a closer look at in more detail so I'm going to go and open this up here so go full screen and then when we go down you should now see exactly steps that you took when you clicked on things and it will tell you exactly what it's doing here so if you wanted to point this out to someone uh, you can do and it will show them you could email them this or post it on a forum and show them the exact error that you're having it will tell additional information down the bottom here it will also tell them what you did search not working and so on and so on and it will go down through the steps that you took to get to that um, situation and it will tell you all the areas here which is very very useful uh, troubleshooting so if you haven't used that feature start using it especially on discord and places like that it's going to be very useful when you're trying to explain what is happening to someone's computer or your computer next up let's move on to another hidden feature uh, and we'll see what this one is so what we're going to do here is right click and we're going to go to new and we're going to go to shortcut inside here we're going to type in a little bit of code so i'm just going to paste this in and basically this is called slide to shut down you can give it whatever name you like i'm just going to take the dot exe off the end here and we'll click finish now what this is going to do is basically give us a slide to shut down you can give the little folder an icon so you can notify it very easily on your desktop or taskbar and you can see here if i pulled this down now it will shut the pc down so as soon as you click on it it will shut down the pc by letting you slide this all the way down very simple and easy to do very useful if you want to add that feature to your version of windows 10 now if you want to change the icon let me just quickly show you that as well and uh, we're going to right click on this and go to here and go properties this is the actual icon i've already changed mine but you can just go change icon and give it an icon so it'll be just a folder here but you can change it to whatever icon you like maybe you want a lock maybe you want that little red uh, stop button maybe a key whatever it is you want to use you can use whatever you like and that's basically that in a nutshell so let's move on to the next uh, feature which is going to be a god mode now everyone knows about god mode but i just wanted to add it inside here just in case some people didn't know about it and uh, you just create a folder on your desktop and add in this bit of code here it's called uh, god mode and you just basically put this code in and it gives you a folder with a load of um, shortcuts to all the stuff you may need i.e um, fix it tools devices and printers and stuff like that so it's all in one little folder here very useful to keep on your desktop if you get access to all of these if you want to use it that's where you can add it you just add that code in say click on this and it will open it up just like so very simple and easy to do and god mode's been around for a long time but i just wanted to add it inside there let's move on to another one here so we're going to go down to the start button here if you right click on the start button it gives you this hidden menu here so some people might not know about that menu but when you right click on it it does give you this little hidden menu and you can see here we've got uh, windows powershell and if you want to swap those out you can do with command prompt they used to have command prompt there and used to have control panel there but they're trying to force you to use the windows settings pane here so let's go into here into personalize and what we're going to do is come down to taskbar and you should see replace windows powershell with command prompt all you need to do is slide that across now someone was asking about this for a video a long time ago but i never got around to it because it was such a simple thing to do but i've managed to slip it into this video 
So the person who asked for that, that's how you do it. It's very simple. And you just swap them over by just using that slider button. Very simple. And uh, that is that. So let's move on to another uh, feature, what you might want to know about. So what we're going to do is go down to the box here, open this up, Explorer. And when you hold the Shift key down, if you highlight the folder that you're doing here and right click on it, you'll see here there is no um, jump to basically this in a PowerShell or Command Prompt. You can have it in either version if you want to. So when you right click and I hold the Shift key down, the left Shift key, you can see open PowerShell here. What this does is it allows you to open PowerShell at that location. That can be very, very useful when you want to open PowerShell up at that location and get access to it through via PowerShell or something like that. It's very useful sometimes and uh, it's good to know. So all you need to do is highlight the folder you want to get access to, hold shift, left shift down, and basically um, you can then right click on there and go open in PowerShell. You can change this to open in command prompt if you wish. That's another video. I'm not going to get too into that one, but if you want to know how to do that, let me know in the comments section below. I'll make that video for you. But basically, yeah, you can change those over. Another one is changing all of the colors of PowerShell or Command Prompt. And you can do that by right clicking at the top of the bar there and going properties. And this will give you access to cursor size and also a bunch of other features like the font size and also colors. You can even make it transparent and you can set it up to exactly how you like it. So if you like bigger font, maybe you want to a different type of color on the background you can do. So all you need to do here once you've done this is close this off and then reopen it and it will be that color when you set it in. I'll, show, I'll quickly show you what it looks like. So let me just change some colors here and also uh, we'll change all this up. So you can see the transparency here. If you want to get a transparent um, background, you can have that slightly transparent as well. You can change it to whatever color you like. So let me quickly uh, shut this off and then we'll reopen it and you'll see what it looks like when you uh, change the color. I'm going to reopen it off screen. There we go. And there you go. That's basically it. So now you can change the color to whatever you like and have this set up to whatever you like there. Simple. And another good feature of this is also having bigger fonts. If you suffer with poor eyesight, you may want to make the font a bit bigger in there and you can largen the font just so you can see it and you can set this color uh, to suit your eyesight. So some people do suffer with uh, bad eyes and you can uh, change that to suit your needs. Very simple and easy to do. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Now this one is a real useful thing. Now if you open up Task Manager here, I don't know about you, you can see how that's gone to the background and that's pretty common. When you're playing games, sometimes you want to shut something down and you can't because Task Manager is behind the back and it's frozen. If you put Always on top here, it puts Task Manager always on the top of whatever you're doing. And I find this super useful, and I don't know why it's like that by default. It should be, because it makes life a lot easier. You can see no matter what I try and do, Task Manager will always be on top because I've set it that way. So when I'm trying to shut stuff down, this will always come to the forefront. Now, when I turn this feature off, as it is by default, you can see it's hidden behind the back. And sometimes when you're trying to shut a process down, in a game or maybe something else task manager is always buried and it's you can use the alt tab um, but it always is a bit more of a faff to do whereas this makes it a lot easier so that was always on top this is another area here you can right click on here and add in some really useful stuff like PID um, and also that is your uh, process identification uh, there so we can also right click and go process name as well and you can see the process name just makes it a lot easier to identify it of what it is. You can move them to the back over here. And also you can add in another one here, which is maybe publisher, or you want to add in some other values. You can add in whatever you like there. Now this is quite useful uh, command line because it shows you where the file is located. So basically all you need to do there is find the file. Now this might be useful for rogue programs that have got say a, a process that suddenly popped up and you want to know what the ID of it is, what the processing name is and where it resides on your computer. So you can use this simple little method to 
actually find files that you want to know what, what they are. So you can say, for instance, this file here, I can see what the executable or process name is, and that means I can kill it and find it. And also I've got the PID number. If I want to do that via um, command prompt or PowerShell, I can do. And if I want to know where the file resides, I can actually find it by using the command line there. Very simple and easy to do. Anyway, I think that will be enough for this video because people complain about the link for the videos. So I'll leave that right there and I'll save the rest for another video. Anyway, that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope this one helps you out, guys. Have a great weekend and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.